Would you mind if I touched your face? No! No? Well, why not? I won't hurt you, Melvin. It's not that. It's just that I have a rash on my face. A rash? You mean acne? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's nothing to worry about, but I wouldn't want you to touch it. You shouldn't be ashamed of acne. Everybody's had acne at one time or another. Hey, I know. Would you like me to tell your fortune? Huh? I read palms. Give me your hand. What big hands you have. I bet you're very strong. Hmm, let me see. You're going to have a lot of good things coming to you in the future. You're going to become a very important man. Let me see your other hand. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Back in the days of the old Hollywood studio system, when movie moguls ruled the town and stars were kept under contract, individual movie studios were often associated with specific genres of films. The name of the studio that made the movie you were sitting down to watch actually meant something to the movie going public. Each studio had their own personality. There were expectations attached to what their latest offering was going to be. Paramount had the glossy comedies. MGM lavish costume dramas and musicals. Universal produced their signature horror classics. And Warner Brothers with its gangster pictures. As the old studio system began to crumble and the rules of Hollywood began to change, the names of the particular studios and their association to what types of films they were making got less and less important to the average moviegoer. Until their names just became a detached logo you'd look at for a few seconds before the movie began. And then there's trauma. Trauma Films is a movie studio that has continued to make a steady stream of product that clearly bears the stamp of its studio that gave birth to it. There's no mistaking their films for anyone else's. If you sit down to watch a movie released by Trauma Films, you know what you're going to get. Troma has been around now for nearly 40 years and has a catalog of movies that have pushed the boundaries of good taste, with films having the lowest of budgets, ridiculous, silly stories, and containing some of the worst acting imaginable. Yet, Troma embraces all of that. That's like what they're aiming for. Because the cost of these productions are so low, they can turn a profit pretty easily. 
The final product isn't exactly Oscar caliber, and it's far removed from the mainstream. Troma markets to a very distinct demographic who finds these particular offerings of films entertaining. This devoted niche audience is what's helped keep Troma around for so long, and they haven't changed much since their inception. Their fans have stayed loyal to Troma, and Troma has continued to give them a steady supply of product. The Troma brand carries some importance in the eyes of its fans. You wouldn't find such loyalty outside the offices of Paramount, Universal, or Fox today. Movie fans probably don't even know who's in charge of those companies. But Troma fans sure know that zany Lloyd Kaufman is president overseeing the exploitation at their beloved studio. Troma founders Kaufman and Michael Hurst would create Troma's biggest hit in 1984, The Toxic Avenger. The Toxic Avenger would spawn sequels, a Saturday morning cartoon, and a musical. The character would become the mascot of Troma Films. Toxie would become Troma's Mickey Mouse. Skinny, weak Melvin works at the health club in Tromaville, New Jersey, the toxic chemical capital of the world. Melvin is picked on by a pack of gym rats who have a heated hatred of him. In between their daily workouts, Bozo, Slug, Wanda, and Julie drive the streets of Tromaville hitting pedestrians with their car and keeping points for fun. One day they decide to get particularly cruel with Melvin, and he ends up falling into a barrel of toxic waste. He survives, but ends up mutating into a hulking monster with superhuman strength. I've seen a few Troma films, and they're just not for me. Although I'm not a fan of their films, I'm happy Troma exists. Here's a movie company that is truly independent. They've been making these low-budget films for a long time and have found success making irreverent, dopey movies for their audience. They don't have any illusions as to what they make and they rejoice in it. Which is great. I'm just not in their fan base. I originally watched The Toxic Avenger years ago back on VHS. It was one of those films that everyone had heard about and were intrigued by. It sounded like a good old fun movie. Me and a group of friends finally managed to score a VHS copy and we watched it late one night. I think we did a double feature of this and Faces of Death. That was another flick we felt the need to see and had to secretly watch. The Toxic Avenger was clearly a departure from the more popular mainstream movies everyone was watching. It was definitely different and there was a uniqueness about it. It looked shoddy and cheap. It had a bizarre air about it. It had boobs in it, but it wasn't a teen sex comedy. It had violence in it, and it seemed more extreme and over the top than any Friday the 13th kind of stuff. At the time, Toxic Avenger did have some pretty shocking stuff in it. The content was pretty wild. I can't say I like the movie though. Troma films are their own animal. You can't really judge them as a regular movie. The acting is awful and the stories are asinine. It's not serious, so it'll survive serious criticism. You really have to get in the spirit, you know, before you watch a trauma flick. So it basically comes down to, does it entertain you? Like I said, I've seen a few trauma films, and whenever I watch them, I always think if you're not in the right mindset to enjoy them, then they can be really torturous to sit through. Personally, I can last maybe 10, 15 minutes of a trauma film before it starts sapping my good-natured attitude and I start to get stone-faced and the sighs start and I'm ready to hit the fast-forward button. It doesn't seem to matter how many boobs or how much blood they fill the screen with. I just get bored with it pretty fast. The Toxic Avenger is the same way with me. So Skinny Melvin gets picked on by these meanies at the trauma gym and the opening scenes really set the tone of the movie. It's all goofy and silly Fortunately, we don't have to wait very long for the notorious head-crushing scene. It's a pretty depraved scene, too. These hooligans are driving around picking off pedestrians and score a big win with a kid on a bike. Yeah, it's sick. It certainly doesn't make me like these people, so I guess it does the job of illustrating that they're bad people. Really bad people. The scene was shocking back then, and it's shocking now. They might not have had a lot of money for this movie, but they were sure able to sell a lot of these effects pretty well. So I have to hand it to them for that. 
they do a lot of really old school gags. Okay, now how about we start again? We're gonna do exactly what I'm doing. Okay, you guys, you know what I'm talking about? Let's go, let's do it this time. Okay, let's get the music. Five, six, seven, eight. I mean, the Three Stooges did that joke. Now that I think about it, Toxie does do a gruesome Stooges eye poke later on. <laughs> Maybe that was meant as a homage. Melvin goes through his transformation. Again, some pretty decent makeup and effects. At the time when they were promoting the movie, they tried to keep what Toxie looked like a secret. And for the most part, it's pretty decent makeup on the actor with his droopy eye and burnt skin. It's not bad. Toxie begins killing all these evildoers in Tromaville in inventive, ghastly ways. All the actors act in the Troma style, screaming really loudly. Apparently Toxie can only kill bad people. There's no explanation as to why, but really, I mean, what could they say anyway? It doesn't have to make sense. So Toxie goes about dishing out lethal justice to the criminals plaguing the city and the bullies who picked on him. In between cleaning up the city, Toxie meets Sarah, a hot-looking blind girl. I better get my cane. It's not exactly city lights, but whatever. And they fall in love. That's one thing I always found funny in this movie. That blatant, badly dubbed voice that they give the Toxic Avenger. It's me, Sarah. Only me. You scared me. It's pretty good. So the big fat cat, crooked mayor, doesn't like what's going on and wants Toxie killed. The story culminates on the outskirts of town where a pretty impressive amount of army vehicles and tanks show up for such a low-budget film. We get a feel-good ending with the citizens rallying behind Toxie as he kills the mayor. Yeah! Such a crazy flick. Because of having such a low budget, there's a rawness to all this. So when Toxie rips off arms and blood gets spurting, it all works pretty well. The car chase is put together pretty nicely, too. It opens things up and is a nice diversion to all the indoor encounters Toxie is generally involved in. Okay. So, uh, some of the girls look hot. Yeah, that chick is pretty smoking. Marissa Tomei shows up in a small early role as health club girl. I would never have recognized her. I guess that's her. That's what people have told me. I get the impression everyone had fun shooting this movie. Um, other than that, this flick is just not my taste. It's probably best to watch this with a group of friends for a silly time. That's how I originally saw it. I still didn't care for it much, though. Although, I did like it more than Faces of Death. The Toxic Avenger is a tough movie to review. It's so friggin' crazy. It's like it's celebrating its badness. Anywhere else, if you saw performances like this, you would shudder in disbelief. But it fits right in with the style of a trauma film. It's campy, over-the-top, and has a senseless, outrageous violence in it. I'm not even sure I could say it falls into the it's so bad it's good category. It's either you get a kick out of it or you don't. I don't. How did the Toxic Avenger get to be so popular? I can understand it being a cult hit and them doing some sequels to it, but not all cult hits spawn their own line of action figures and cartoons. And remember, this was not today where any movie with a small devoted fan base can easily get their own line of action figures. Or, sorry, collectibles. These toys were targeted to children, sold in toy stores. All based on a movie that proudly promoted a graphic head-crushing scene. This would not happen today. It's pretty crazy to think about how, back then, such violent films were being adapted into cartoons for the little ones to enjoy on Saturday mornings. And these were not lofty, animated productions. They were cartoons. It would be like today, kids waking up early, running down the stairs, and watching the old boy cartoon. So there was something about the Toxic Avenger that struck some chord. 
Perhaps it was the environmental slant to the character. Other than Woodsy Owl and the Crying Indian, pollution and the environment weren't at the forefront of people's minds at the time. So Toxie had it all to himself. He predated the whole environmental movement. Although that's not really what the movie wanted to focus on, you can't deny that message wasn't present somewhere in this craziness. He's a perfect mascot for that. Um, Toxie fit in with that whole anti-hero character that was so popular in the 80s. We were all rooting for characters that took the law into their own hands. They were the ones who delivered swift justice to the guilty. No waiting. You were a bad person, you committed crimes, then forget waiting for the cops. Our heroes were going to break your neck and fill you with lead. You like running down kids on bicycles? The Toxie was coming for you. Plus, he was a unique hero. A monster hero. The original intention was to make a monster movie in a health club. But they were really smart to change the whole idea around and make him more of a misfit superhero, battling, well, killing criminals and inspiring hope to the downtrodden citizens of Tromaville against the corrupt who were in charge. In the decade of power and greed, there was a timely message to that. It also had that universal hopeful message that the underdog can be triumphant. Or it could be that The Toxic Avenger was just an extremely silly graphic movie that delivered the goods and had a catchy monster character. You can't take any of it seriously. I mean, the filmmakers weren't. I do think the change from the original title, Health Club Horror, to calling it The Toxic Avenger was a major factor in making the film and character so memorable. I doubt the character would still be so well known and be the face of trauma had they just stuck to calling him the monster hero. I'm really the monster hero you've heard about. And every day I go out and I mash people. I tear them apart and I can't stop. 